Are you looking to build a new property in 2022 or 2023? Are you exploring to buy an off the plan property from a developer sometime soon? In today's video, we're gonna break down exactly why I wouldn't be buying a new build or buying an off the plan property anytime soon. And we're gonna explore how you can buy established properties and potentially still get a new build at the same time. So to kick off, let's start with off the plan and new builds. Now, build costs have gone up significantly in the last 12 months. People who were getting quotes for around 300 to 350,000 to get a new build are now seeing quotes around 500 to 600,000 to build the exact same property. So number one on my list is why I would be avoiding new builds or off the plans at this point in time is the significant build cost. You're not gonna be able to manufacture much value at this point in time. You're gonna be paying your profits to the developer and the builder. And so there's not really any headroom left for you to create much equity at this point in time, unless you're building in a very unique location that's in high demand. On the flip side, you might be able to buy properties in established suburbs, which are under build cost. If you can buy a property where the land value is 300,000 and the build would be valued at 300,000 as well, or pick that property up for $500,000 at this point in time, because the building's depreciated in value, then essentially you can buy below rebuild costs. At the end of the day, you paid $500,000. And if you had to rebuild that property or sell the land by itself, the rebuild cost plus the land value would be more than what you paid for that property. So you've got to find the balance between buying cheap properties, which cash flow well and have growth potential, and also buying some higher value, more blue chip properties, which means you don't have a portfolio of 50 properties or hundred properties at any point in time. Once you're getting to that scale, I think you're really running out or running into the business world and you need staff and admin and accountants working for you full time to manage that level of portfolio. The next reason to avoid buying a new build or off the plan is the issue with land supply. If you're buying in these areas, you're typically in greenfield or housing estates, which are a long way from the CBD, and there's a lot more land supply to come onto the market. These developers will sell the properties in stages. So stage one will be released for sale. And once that's all sold or nearly all sold, they'll release stage two, and then they'll sell stage two and then move on to stage three and so on. What this means is, with supply continually coming onto the market within that specific suburb and that specific location, there's going to be more supply and probably steady demand. Whereas you compare that to an established suburb that's 20 years old, there's already constrained land supply and there's no more houses that can be built in those areas. And if there's the same level of demand and not as much supply, there are likely to be stronger price growth and stronger demand for those properties and purchase prices. So I'll be avoiding areas that have this open land, these greenfield areas. In Brisbane, just some examples would be Park Ridge, uh, Yarra Bilba, Ormo and Pimpama. These are well-known areas that land developers like Lendlease, uh, and Springfield are releasing a lot of land in these areas and creating a lot more supply. It's good for those who wanna buy their own home and become an owner occupier and live in these new areas, that's great. But as an investor, it's probably not a great idea to be buying in these areas which have a massive amount of land supply and don't really have that constrained land supply and continued demand. The demand for those properties are gonna to go to the future new builds because why would you buy a property that's two or three years old when you can buy a brand new property for a similar price in the same area? Another area that's touted for growth like this is at Caboolture on Brisbane's north side where major land developers are doing the exact same thing. Now this leads me into the next point, which is property spruikers saying to investors that these new builds and these off the plan builds are gonna only cost you a dollar a week or $50 a week or put $50 in your pocket after everything, after tax and depreciation. Depreciation should be a bonus in your property portfolio. It shouldn't be a true selling point as to why you should or shouldn't buy a property. Essentially all depreciation is, is a non-cash deduction on your tax statement. And it really shouldn't be used as a deal breaker or a deal maker when you run the cash flows on a property purchase. What's more important for me as an investor is whether the property has growth potential. So it's in a location that's going to see higher incomes look to move into the area over the long term. And it's got unique living and lifestyle factors like great schools, shops, access to amenities uh, and beaches or walkways and parklands. That's far more important to me than getting the added bonus of cash flow from using depreciation. So don't be lured in by spruikers selling you depreciation depreciation benefits, definitely go out, have a chat with a quantity surveyor if you've got a new build property or you've done renovations to a property and you wanna maximize your tax deductions, but don't let that be a key selling point as to why you should buy an off the plan or new build property. 
To close this video out, the last key point I wanna talk about in off the plans and new builds is time. To actually go through buying one of these properties can take anywhere between one to two to three years, depending on the developer. If you're not working with a reputable builder or developer, you might run into trouble and time delays, which could stop you from moving forward in your property portfolio. Weigh up these two options. You could buy an established property, which might need a bit of painting and flooring work done to it for say 30 or 40 thousand dollars where you can add value and potentially double your money or you put a bit of a deposit down and you've got to wait two years for the actual property to be built and then the cash flow to start coming in. The person that has gone with the established property is in the market straight away and they're able to get cash flow immediately. They're able to add value to the property immediately. Whereas the other person who's bought the new build has uncertainty. They also have a lag time for that property to be built and then they have the cash flow coming off that only one to two years later. So for me, I want to put my money to work. I want to move forward in building my property portfolio and doing that with established properties in sought after locations rather than signing a contract on an off the plan or new build out in housing estates would be the much better option for me. Now, if you are making an emotional decision and buying for yourself as an owner occupier, then by all means, you can sign up for an off the plan and get the government grants and go ahead uh, with that purchase. But Wearing my accounting and, and buyer's agency cap, I can't really advocate for buying these off the plan builders because at the end of the day, you're paying the developer and builders profits. It's essentially the same thing with these off the plan properties and valuations don't always stack up. Whereas when you sign on the dotted line and buy that new build property, you're paying all that profit to the developer and builder and there's no more room to really create value in that situation. A common saying and one I always like to use is that land appreciates and buildings depreciate over time. And when you're buying one of these new build properties, you're typically getting it only on a small lot, three to 400 square meters out in the suburbs, about 30 kilometers from the CBD. Whereas that block size would only be considered reasonable, say five to 10 kilometers from the city. And you could be buying in established areas on 600 square meters, rather than spending your money on a brand new property on three to 400 square meters, a similar distance from the city. So really you'd be getting less land value and more building value. And like I said, land appreciates and buildings depreciate over time. So over the long term, this might not be the best investment decision for you, but really it's your money. So it's up to you what you do at the end of the day. If you got value out of this video or you enjoy any of my content, please drop a like. It really helps me out. Subscribe to the channel down below and click this video over here for more things, real estate, renovating and financial freedom. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Can I say hello?